For the better part of my career as a sports photographer, I've used cameras that look just like this. This is a uh, Nikon D4S. It's their current flagship model. It's uh, very similar in, in most respects to the EOS 1DX. It shoots 10 frames a second, and it does that uh, very effectively and very well as it autofocuses and tracks moving subjects, especially in sporting events. It also shoots 60p video. The retail cost of this camera is about $6,500. Um, the lens is another $200, um, and um, it weighs a lot. And when you carry three of these at a game uh, for three or four hours, it, it really takes a toll on your body and your pocketbook. This is a pretty revolutionary camera. This is a um, Sony A6000. Um, this camera shoots 60p video, just like this one. This camera shoots 11 frames a second, which is a little bit faster than the Nikon. Um, here you go. Um, and its retail price is about $550. The lens is another couple hundred bucks, just like this one. Um, this lens has internal stabilization built into it. This one does not. Um, and the package is quite different. Um, this is extremely lightweight, small. It has uh, an articulated uh, LCD screen on the back and that will allow you to put the camera on the ground for doing remotes and things like that. This is vastly superior to uh, a D4S. Also, if you're going to bolt a camera on the backstop for a basketball game and try and do remote, uh, post remote as we call them, um, if you're going to do it with this, you're going to risk, you know, a, a $7,000 accident, uh, ball hitting it, maybe a big repair. This one, you know, I don't want to say they're disposable because I really love the camera and I use it all the time. But I have been taking this camera with me to sporting events now for about uh, four months. I've shot basketball, volleyball, lacrosse, uh, soccer, football, um, and a number of other sports. Uh, that, and it's really, really surprisingly good. It's excellent in what it's doing. It has a very advanced autofocus system, and if you're coming out of Nikon or Canon, or if you're just augmenting your Nikon and Canon system with something lightweight and small that, you don't, that won't kill you carrying all day, um, these are very confusing to get into the custom functions. There's, I think, 28 custom functions total, and then there's some other things that are sort of added value and added confusion um, if you're coming from the more typical sports cameras. So this video is going to actually be all about setting up your A6000 for the purpose of shooting sports. There's lots of different bells and switches and knobs and things that turn electronically in the camera. It's very, very uh, confusing to figure out. Over the past four months, I've found uh, a group of combinations of custom functions that really help me do a good job. Um, and capture what I want to with the A6000. And so without further ado, we're going to actually just look at the boring view of the back of the camera for the, the rest of the video. Okay, the first custom function we want to talk about uh, that has, that's pertinent to sports photography is the quality setting. I've left mine on fine. You can also do raw and JPEG or just raw if you like, but I find that uh, the JPEGs I get out of here are excellent, and so I just leave it on fine. This also allows me to shoot a burst of however many pictures I want, almost without stopping. So I just leave it on fine. Now we're going to go to the next frame, number two. Uh, here, drive mode should be on continuous shooting, and it should be on high. Uh, that will give you the 11 frames per second that uh, I gave an example earlier. So we'll go back now. The other, uh, the, the other focus modes, now this is, a little, this is where it gets really confusing. Um, there are lots of different modes. The default setting when the camera comes out of the box is AFS, which is AF single. This is the same as Canon and Nikon. Uh, we're going to go down to AFC because that's where we want to be for continuous autofocus. Um, and then we're going to go into focus area. Now this is the one that's so incredibly confusing. Uh, because there's a lot of modes in here that don't exist in Canon and Nikon, at least not in the same way. Wide is your wide focus area. This will pick up all of the uh, 79 autofocus points across the entire viewfinder. If you just don't know what you're doing um, and you're sort of an amateur at this, this is a great place to start because the camera's going to sense movement and it's going to lock on to the action and do a very, very nice job. Gary Fong has some videos that show this. 
Uh, I don't personally use this too often. Uh, I have, but in different sports it doesn't work very well. Others it works extremely well. I found it worked extremely well in soccer, uh, but not for football um, when there's too many people standing up that would block your view. Um, zone is something that I would kind of avoid for right now, and single is kind of where you want to be. Uh, this is going to be sort of the same as the Canon and Nikon, where you have the center uh, autofocus indicator in the middle of the frame. You can see that, that black square, and that's going to be where you're going to be at. Now there's one more that's really cool, and that is this one, which is flexible spot. And I prefer, um, I prefer the flexible spot to be in the small position. So let me get back to that. And yeah, small, medium, large. This will give you this little itty bitty tiny orange uh, autofocus sensor. And that's what I like to use, uh, especially for football, football and basketball. Um, because you just don't, you can't rely on the camera. The camera's always going to focus on what's closest to it, and that's not always what I want it to do. So on to the next one. Uh, you have AF Illuminator, which you want to turn off. That's going to put a light out in the front of the camera, which we, it's not going to help you with sports at all. AF Drive Speed. You've got your default setting is normal uh, when it comes out of the box, but uh, for certain sports, I like fast much better. What would these be? Definitely basketball, where there's all these people that are constantly in your way between you and the action that you want versus what you don't want. And fast will acquire the fastest. So just look at this AF drive speed as acquisition speed. That's the, this is going to drive the lens as fast as it can possibly go, which is what I like. Now that can be a problem for soccer um, and lacrosse. You, you want to go on you know, medium for that, so the, or the normal setting, excuse me. And then AF track duration, you've got high and normal. I, I leave it on high. Um, here's one that um, you really want to turn. The face detection is really cool. The Sony has an amazing system where it will literally do facial recognition autofocus. So if it sees a face, if you've got it set like this, you can have the camera in video or in stills focus on the face. Somehow it actually sees through glasses frames to eyeballs. I don't know how, I don't pretend to know, I don't really care, all I know is it works. But for sports photography, field sports especially, basketball, things like that, this adds uh, more confusion to the camera. You're asking it to do too many things. And all I want it to do is focus on what I want and do it quickly and accurately. So you turn the smile and face detection off, and then we'll go back to our menus. Um, color space, you should always be in RGB. It's the largest gamut uh, for your, your option. You're probably going to be post-processing in Lightroom or uh, in Photoshop anyway, so you're always better off to be in that color space. That's not necessarily a sports thing, but on the other hand, if you're shooting for prints, if you're like doing uh, you know, youth photography and youth sports and stuff like that, you always want to be in sRGB because that's the native uh, printer uh, gamut. So uh, let's go on to the next one. Nothing there for us to look at. Um, okay, auto review you want to see off. Now this is very confusing because if, if we turn auto review on, what's going to happen is every time you take a picture, the camera's going to show you the picture, which is very confusing. Remember your EVF, so you want to always have that off. And uh, remember that when you're shooting, with um, where you can constantly see what the chip is seeing, you don't really need to review. So it's kind of a chimp-free zone, this Sony stuff. It's pretty cool. So on to the next one. Peaking level, none of these things are matter. Now this one is very, very important. You want to have setting effect on. And this is going to always show you what your actual exposure is. Now this camera is set to manual, so I can control my shutter speeds and my apertures independently of each other. Um, and you always want to be able to see exactly what the camera is seeing at all times. Um, so you want to have that live view display setting effect on. And let's see here. Pre-AF just gives you a little bit of a hop, a little bit of an uh, early look. Um, I would leave that on. And let's see here, AF with shutter. Now this is the this is the um, 
the age-old question. Uh, when the EOS, Canon EOS 630 came out way long time ago, this would have been in the late 80s, it had what we still call today Function 4. Function 4 put your back button, it put your uh, autofocus onto the back button of the camera rather than on the shutter release. And most of us that are professional sports photographers, almost everybody I know, I, I, I can think of very few people who use autofocus activated by the index finger on the shutter release. So all of us really don't do this. So I would definitely turn that off. So AF with shutter you want to turn off. Here is custom key settings. This is very important. So I have my AE lock button, which is right here. You can't really see it because the camera's tilted, but that's where my, my, I want my button back button focus at. And so I have that on. So now when I touch the, the shutter release, it's not going to um, autofocus at all, but it, it, it will autofocus as soon as I push my thumb in, okay? So let's go back to our menu. That does our function four, takes care of that. And all these are good. And finally, we get into monitor brightness should be manual. Um, uh, viewfinder brightness should also be manual. And then audio signals off. This will, this will make the camera not beep all the time like an amateur. I hate that. So we're going to not do that with that. And that's it. So um, that's kind of my little preview of how to set up the camera. Um, this will give you very, very good results for peak action sports photography. You will have to sometimes change the settings. Um, one setting is not good for every single thing, so you'll have to kind of experiment on your own. But this should be a good primer to get you successful right away, whether you're shooting your kid's soccer game or if you're a professional photographer trying to figure out how to make the A6000 really kill it for sports for your work. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful with just uh, looking at the menus and stuff. It's a little daunting if you're not familiar with Sony when you first dive in. Uh, I switched from Canon to Nikon about four years ago. And I had a lot of trouble figuring out um, just the language that was used and some of the features are different. Um, same thing with Sony. It's a, it's a little acquired taste, but you'll get it after a while, I think. Um, uh, last, you know, what lens should I use for sports? Um, I have had great success using uh, the FE 70-200 F4. Um, this is an OSS lens. OSS is Sony's version of IS or VR. It works extremely well. Uh, I've pulled many times, I've shot video at 200 millimeter, um, zoomed all the way out and handheld for like two or three minutes at a pop and it worked fine. Uh, it's very solid, very, very rock on. Um, the, um, the FE 7200 is very, very similar to anything you're used to in the Canon L glass or the really good Nikon uh, ED glass, it's VR. It has virtually the same exact uh, settings for uh, the, the two modes for the uh, steady shot, optical steady shot, um, and then full and limit for your zoom range, your uh, focus range, and then your on off for your manual focus. But this, this lens and camera combination is pretty cool because the FE lens, uh, its FE designation is, this is made for the full frame system, the A7 system. And so when you put this onto an A6000, which is a crop body, you're effectively getting a 100 to 300 millimeter F4 zoom that is very, very fast, extremely fast in terms of how fast it reacts and autofocuses. So this is a really neat combination. Now what's, what's really cool about this is, you know, this combination, brand new, is right around $2,000 to buy the lens and the camera body. And again, 11 frames a second, um, 60p video, 60 and 24p both. And you get the EVF, um, which is a much better way to see what you're doing as you're doing it. It's a chimp-free system, so you don't have to constantly be looking at what you just shot to see if it worked, to see if it's in focus, to see if it's exposed properly, because you're constantly looking at the correct exposure and if you see a problem, a cloud comes over, you see it in the viewfinder and you can fix it immediately. So it's a really, really neat system. And this would not compare too well to the Nikon or Canon counterparts. So if you are comparing this in cost to a D4S and the 7200 VR2 version, you're going to be spending $9,000 versus $2,000. So it's crazy, but you could literally have four of these 
you know, for the, for the one. It's, it's nuts. So um, I don't know that, I, I would not go out and say that this is better than a D4S or a 1DX. It's clearly not, but they are getting closer and closer all the time. Um, I would much rather shoot uh, an A6000 with uh, this F4 zoom than, you know, the current 7D. I think that this is a much better way to go, the mirrorless, the lightweight nature of things. I just love how small and light it is. Um, and just in case you're wondering if it's possible, you can use the A-mount lenses uh, on the, uh, this is a, uh, a Sony 300 uh, millimeter 2.8, and it's connected to um, the A6000 by means of the LEA4 adapter. So this adapter, uh, brings in a pellicle mirror element and allows you to use the big A-mount glass or the old Minolta mount glass onto the A6000. And what's really cool about this combination um, is that this, because it's a crop body sensor camera, we're talking about this, this now becomes a 450 millimeter uh, 2.8 combination with incredibly fast autofocus. Um, very, very accurate uh, focusing system and very innovative. Um, so this is all, you know, that you could buy a $600 camera at Best Buy um, or wherever you choose to buy it and then use it on a camera on a lens like this, like a world-class, you know, telephoto. It's pretty amazing uh, what the, um, the entire um, A6000 has to offer. So I hope that this has been informative for you. I hope that you've learned a couple things about Sony, but I, I hope for first of all, most of all, that you take this stuff seriously because mirrorless is not a fad. Mirrorless is, is not a uh, fly-by-night little technology that's gonna pass like Betamax. Um, sorry, Sony. <laughs> but this is a fantastic system, and I predict that many young photographers, when they come out of school, especially in photojournalism, they're not going to be reaching for a DSLR. They're not going to want to carry it, and they're not going to want to pay for it. And their employers are not going to want to pay for it either. And when people see such similar results between an inexpensive combination like this A6000 and 7200F4 and a D4S and a 7200 2.8, when they see how good this is, even in low light, I think that many people will start switching away from the DSLR systems from Canon and Nikon into Sony to take advantage of the lightweight nature of things, to get the cutting edge video technology, um, and the great autofocus tracking ability in sports action photography. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, it's been a long one, I know, but uh, I hope you have a great day, and um, we'll see you next time.